Hi everyone, welcome back to Zoo School Live at Elmwood Park Zoo. My name is Laura and I'm an educator here and today I am with Pokey, the North American porcupine. So we're going to be talking a little bit about his special adaptations, how he survived in the wild, and then we'll also take some questions and see what you guys would like to know more about. So um, while the zoo is closed, we're hoping to do these sessions um, every day, Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. So make sure you tune in. So Pokey here is busy snacking on his breakfast. Um, he's got a mixture of apples and um, some biscuit and carrot, and he is a very, very hungry little eater. He's got some serious teeth we'll talk about in a few minutes here. But the big thing that most people know about porcupines, and the first thing you'll notice is that they are covered in these really large hairs, um, specifically these quills. Most people are familiar with the pokey porcupine, hence the name. But many people don't realize that these quills are actually just regular hair, kind of like what we have all over our body. Um, Pokey actually has three different kinds of hair. So you can see the shorter dark brown hair. It looks a little more fluffy. That is um, his fur that helps to keep him warm, especially because porcupines are often found in habitats where it's a little bit colder. So northern Pennsylvania up through um, northern North America into Canada. So he has that dark brown fur to keep him warm, just like our hair or other mammals fur would. And then he has these long, light colored hairs that stick out from his body. These are his guard hairs. So these actually help him to sense stuff that's happening around him. Um, because porcupines do uh, live in the forest with a lot of other large animals that may want to eat them, they do have these guard hairs to help them uh, feel something that might be approaching. Um, and it can also help them walk around without bumping into stuff because porcupines don't exactly have the best eyesight. So they have short fur for warmth, they have guard hairs for um, their sense of touch, and then underneath all of that, it's a little difficult to see when he's relaxed, he does have those quills. So North American porcupine quills are actually not very big. They're about two to three inches long, and they're kind of whitish in color. And on, on Pokey, they're actually hidden, kind of tucked into all of those soft, fluffy hairs, except for on his tail. On his tail, they do stick out a little bit more. Now, when a porcupine is relaxed, those quills kind of sit flat. They don't stick out. Porcupines don't really walk around the forest looking for people to shoot at, uh, shoot at with their quills or looking for a fight. They pretty much mind their own business, but those quills are there for protection. Um, so like hairs, they are made of keratin, but with a porcupine quill, they are actually hollow. So again, we have our North American quills here. There are many kinds of porcupines found throughout the world. Um, sometimes they have much larger quills, like the Asian crested porcupine, but just like our hair, made of the same keratin material, they're just hollow on the inside. So they're very light, but they do usually have a sharp pointed end. The reason the porcupines can be a little scary is because of these quills, but again, they don't go around shooting them at other animals. They typically mind their own business, but if an animal were to try to attack, were to try to, to get a meal out of a porcupine, they would use those quills to keep themselves safe. Um, porcupines would prefer to kind of run around and, and run away, and Pokey here is an excellent climber. If he felt threatened, the first thing he would try to do is escape. So he might run um, under some brush, he might climb up a tree. He's actually got huge claws on those feet to help him to grip. They are excellent climbers. But unfortunately, if they weren't able to get away fast enough, they would use those quills. So they actually will tighten the muscles underneath the fur and kind of stick and arch their back up. That'll cause the quills to stand up and they'll face their back towards that animal that's coming after them. And they'll start to kind of swing their tail back and forth. And this is how they would uh, protect themselves. They wouldn't shoot the quills, but those quills, because they're so light, would fall off pretty easily. And if an animal were to touch those quills, they can get stuck inside of their skin. So that's kind of where the myth of a porcupine um, being able to shoot their quills came from because they do fall out pretty easily. And just like, you know, a dog or a cat might shake themselves out sometimes, porcupines will do the same. So they, uh, the quills can come out very easily. So our friend Pokey, as I said, is munching on his breakfast right now. These guys are herbivores. So that means they eat mostly plant material. In the wild, they would love to snack on some browse. So we have some branches here. We'll see if Pokey's interested. Um, we have different evergreen branches. Porcupines have an excellent sense of smell that helps them to not only find their food, but to also sniff out any predators as well. Things like coyotes, 
and bobcats. So here in our area, we have coyote, which are related to dogs. Um, we also have bobcats, a large cat predator in this area. These guys would both hunt for porcupines, so they would have to protect themselves. But the number one porcupine predator happens to be something called a fisher. And a fisher belongs in the weasel family and fishers are pretty crafty. They've actually learned that if they can get to the underside of the porcupine, they don't have any quills on their belly. And that's the best way for them to try to get a happy snack out of a porcupine. But again, those quills, super handy. They're very good defense mechanism. They keep porcupines safe and they can live sometimes upwards of 20 years in the wild, if not longer. Pokey here is actually only uh, almost two years old. So his birthday's coming up on April 25th. He was born here at Elmwood Park Zoo. Unfortunately, when Pokey was very little, his mom passed away. So he was raised by our veterinary staff here on site, which is why he's an excellent ambassador animal. He's very comfortable around people, very used to attention, um, going out and seeing the public and meeting new friends. So he makes a really great ambassador animal because he's been exposed to those situations his whole life. Even though Pokey is less than two years old, he already weighs about 20 pounds. So porcupines can be pretty heavy. Uh, they're very large mammals. They can grow upwards of 30 pounds sometimes. Um, so he's still got some growing to do and we hope he'll, uh, he'll enjoy more and more snacks throughout the summer and continue to get into his full size. Um, Pokey is, like I said, munching on some of those snacks. His teeth you might be able to see on camera, but if not, his teeth look very similar to a beaver's. In the very front, he has incisors, just like we have, and those incisors are for chomping and chewing, and his teeth never stop growing. He does belong to the rodent family. So, <laughs> like other rodents, like rats and mice and squirrels, um, and in this case, beavers and porcupines, they're all gonna have these big incisors that are continuously growing. They have rootless teeth, which is pretty cool. The interesting thing with that is they have to constantly be chomping and chewing on stuff to keep their teeth healthy, um, which is why sometimes rodents can be a challenging animal to have around. They like to chew on our stuff sometimes too. Um, but porcupines would spend a lot of time chewing on branches, bark, and leaves. Here at the zoo, Pokey eats a mixture of apple and carrot. He's got some yam, and then he has a special block. Um, it's almost like cereal called rodent block that helps keep his teeth nice and healthy. So I think we'll uh, start taking some questions and see what you guys would like to know. <clears throat> All right. So Samantha would like to know what Pokey's favorite food is. Ooh, that's a tough one. So Pokey's favorite food actually changes daily. Um, we think we get it figured out and then he changes it up. So because um, we do make sure he's eating a healthy diet, he usually gets some combination of apple, um, carrot, or sweet potato along with his biscuits and he rotates through those. So some days apple is his favorite, some days carrot is his favorite, some days sweet potato is his favorite. So it kind of changes. All right. So do we groom Pokey? Ooh, that's a good question. So we don't really have to groom Pokey. Uh, as I mentioned, they can lose their quills and their other hairs. They do shed um, just like other mammals. So if you have a cat or dog at home or even ourselves, we lose our hair um, as new hairs grow in. Same thing happens with porcupines. Um, we don't really bathe Pokey. He does a pretty good job of, of keeping himself clean, thankfully. It would be pretty troublesome to try to put, give a porcupine a bath. So, great question. All right. Um, so, Reagan wants to know how big do their quills grow? So, North American por porcupines, their quills grow to be about two to three inches. So, again, not very big. Um, this is a kind of a jar we have collected a few that have fallen off. Um, when it comes to other species, though, like I said the Asian crested can have a much larger uh, set of quills. So, but North Americans about two to three inches. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, someone would like to know if his nails are super sharp. So they are uh, pretty sharp, not necessarily as sharp as some animals that use their claws for hunting. Um, Pokey's claws are used for grabbing and climbing. So they are sharp enough to help him grip bark. Um, and he actually has really, really thick uh, pads on his feet too to help him grip. 
All right, so Abby would like to know what kind of porcupine he is, and Owen would like to know if he can be trained. Oh, I love that question. So Pokey is a North American porcupine, and um, he actually is trained to do a few different things. Um, when he first came out for the Facebook Live today, I uh, used a treat to reward him, and then I also have a clicker. Um, Pokey is clicker trained, so that means he knows the click means he did a good job and he's gonna get a snack. We've also uh, been working on target training Pokey. So that means we have a, a stick with a little ball on the end and Pokey is learning to touch his nose to it to get a snack. And that helps us to move him around his enclosure and move him on the table if we need to. So we, we train him um, to participate in his, in his programming. All right, so Kara would like to know, has anybody picked him up before? Yes, when Pokey was little, we, we uh, were able to pick him up a lot more easily. Um, he did have to travel with our vet staff back and forth um, from their clinic and, and you know home with them for a while. Um, now we do not pick Pokey up, although Pokey does like people and sometimes he tries to, to climb up and uh, get closer to us. So he's getting a little heavy. Like I said, he's about 20 pounds, so. Um, all right, so we had someone, Bella and Noah, asking, do they sleep at the day, during day or night? That's an excellent question. Po uh, Pokey, the porcupine, is active kind of throughout the day here at the zoo, but in the wild, they are typically more nocturnal. So that means they come out more at nighttime than they would during the day. But it kind of depends on the season. Porcupines do live in areas where it can get very cold and they don't hibernate necessarily. They do have to find food year round. So um, they can be more active kind of at different times of the day, but usually they're out at nighttime. Excellent questions. All right, so we had Dan Danny Ray asked, how long will his teeth grow and will they ever get too long? That's an excellent question. So his teeth are constantly gonna grow in the front. Um, right now, I would say they're probably maybe an inch long and that's a healthy length. Um, Again, we give him bark and uh, hard foods and things to chew on. He even gets things like bone, um, like antlers, to help trim down his teeth. So they could grow longer, and uh, eventually they would get to a point where he would have trouble opening his mouth. And so we would never let it get to that point, but uh, if they are not chewing on things appropriately, they can grow too long. But Pokey's teeth are probably, I'd say, about an inch long right now. All right, so Jacob wants to know where Pokey's natural habitat would be. So Pokey would normally be found in um, forests throughout northern North America, so into Canada, and they're actually found here in Pennsylvania, just not in Norristown where the zoo is. They would be found more um, up in the northern part of the state where there's a lot of forest and it's a little bit cooler. They actually also can be found in northern Mexico. Um, so they prefer a forested habitat, especially because they're very good at climbing trees. Okay, so Lindsay and James want to know if Pokey has family members at the zoo. He does, so again, Pokey was born here. So his dad, um, Spork, is actually one of our porcupines on exhibit. Um, and unfortunately, his mom did pass away, so she is no longer with us, but he has um, some siblings, some half siblings. We have Khaleesi, who is another uh, ambassador porcupine um, here at the zoo, and then a few of his other siblings were actually sent to other zoos to live out and, and make new friends. Excellent questions today, guys. Um, all right, Tanner wants to know what his favorite thing to do is. I would say Pokey's favorite things would include chewing on stuff. So he spends a lot of time chewing on things, sometimes things he's not supposed to chew on. Um, he also loves to sleep. <laughs> so those are his two main habits. Um, today he's enjoying some company with us. Pokey does like to be around people as well, which is again, a great thing for an ambassador animal because that is part of his job, is to help to teach and, and meet new people. All right, so Aubrey um, was a zookeeper for the day last April and she got to meet Pokey and she says hi. Well, thank you, Aubrey, and I'm sure Pokey had a great time meeting with you. All right. Ooh, Ella from Lower Providence would like to know if Pokey has ever accidentally hurt any of you with his quills. That's a great question. Um, so it is a risk we have to take when we hang out with Pokey. The nice thing is, is, as I mentioned earlier, when he's relaxed, his quills do sit pretty flat against his body. Um, we are obviously very careful not to run up and grab him or to startle him. And that's part of why we train him actually to voluntarily come in and out of his crate. So he puts himself back in the crate when we're done. He comes out when we're getting started, so we don't really have to touch him. So thankfully, I have never accidentally been hurt by his quills. I don't believe any of our, our other educators have either. Um, but it is something we have to be careful because sometimes, you know, Pokey could get startled um, and, and he's just trying to protect himself. All right, let's see. 
Um, Piper would like, like to know if Pokey ever feels threatened by people at the zoo. Um, no, thankfully, for the most part, as I mentioned, Pokey loves to be around people because he was raised by people from the very beginning. So for the most part, if you give him uh, appropriate amount of space, you know, as long as he's comfortable and especially if he has snacks, he loves to eat snacks, then Pokey's pretty comfortable around everybody, including guests at the zoo. All right. Um, let's see. <laughs> Holly says, can you pet him? <laughs> so um, even though Pokey does like people, we try not to pet Pokey too much. Um, he'll allow me to kind of touch his guard hairs to show those off. But as far as pets go, porcupines don't really like to be touched. Uh, in the wild, they live by themselves most of the time. They don't really have a big family that they stay with. So for them, um, being touched is kind of a weird thing. They're not quite sure how to handle that. All right, so um, how are all the animals doing with the, the panic that's going on? You know, the concerning times? That was a great question. Um, Pokey probably has no idea what's going on. We are working really, really hard to make sure all of our animals feel safe and are continuing to be cared for. They're getting enrichment. They're getting um, extra time, if you know, if anything else with us. And their, their daily lives have not changed a whole lot. And we're going to try our best to make sure we do that. One way you can actually help us out, um, especially if you'd uh, like to see little friend Pokey get some extra snacks, if you check out our website, elmwoodparkzoo.org, we actually have an emergency fund that we've established. Unfortunately, our doors are closed um, until you know we get the okay to reopen. And uh, during that time, we're not really bringing in any revenue. So if you would like to make a donation, especially Pokey's got a birthday coming up, April 25th, um, we are definitely uh, thankful for all of our members and for everyone tuning in. And, and we would like to make sure we continue providing the best care for our animals. So definitely check out elmwoodparkzoo.org if you would like to help. All right, so we'll take a few more questions here. Um, Hannah wants to know how big does he grow? So Pokey is almost two years old, um, but he is not quite full grown. So right now he weighs about 20 pounds, um, but male porcupines in particular can be upwards of 30 or 40 pounds. They can be really, really big. So Pokey can get to be maybe about twice this size by the time he's done growing. Um, he has grown a whole lot in those last year or two years, but he still has a ways to go. Ooh, Ly uh, Lina would like to know, um, does he see better during the day or at night? That's an excellent question. So porcupines don't have the best eyesight. They have a really good sense of hearing and a really good sense of smell. Um, their eyesight is probably pretty equal day and night. So um, they can see pretty close distances um, and they can you know, see enough to find food, but it doesn't necessarily have the same um, difference as like an owl, you know, an animal that seems even better at nighttime. So Pokey's eyesight is probably just as good in the daytime as it is at nighttime. Okay. Um, Kenzie would like to know what do they eat out in the wild? So they're gonna be eating a lot of different plant material. So I have a couple examples here. We have some different branches. We'll see if Pokey's interested um, in checking those out. Uh, he would eat different bits of bark and leaves and um, foliage off of trees. They do eat nuts and, and some berries, things like that. So pretty much all different plant material. All right, um, Bryson asked if they're found locally. These guys are not found here in Norristown, but they are found in Pennsylvania. If you travel a little bit further north um, into the Pocono area, that's where they can be found. Um, let's see, ooh, how much food does he eat during the day? Um, all right, so we do weigh out his diet pretty closely. Pokey eats usually one time a day. Um, we scatter his food throughout. Uh, I don't know the exact amount, but he gets probably the equivalent to one full carrot and one full apple a day. And then he gets um, a pretty good portion, I would say maybe um, two or three cups of this biscuit. So it's kind of spread out throughout his, his home if we're not using it for training. <laughs> um, and then he gets browse, which is what we call um, different branches and leaves and things like that. So he gets um, a pretty good amount of his normal diet here, but then he gets some extras as well. Um, Anna and Jessa would like to know if he has to clean, clean his quills. Um, not necessarily. So porcupines uh, do go in the water. They, they can swim. Um, in fact, in the summertime when it's really hot, Pokey and our other porcupine, Khaleesi, love to take baths. So they do kind of clean themselves that way, but they don't necessarily spend a lot of time grooming like some other mammals would. Good questions today, guys. All right. 
Um, <laughs> Nilo would like to know what's his favorite thing to play with. So for Pokey, um, he does like to chew and climb and explore. So we do try to give him um, different branches to climb on. He also um, really enjoys like after the holiday season, we get a lot of donations of Christmas trees. So Pokey loves to climb and play in Christmas trees. Um, he also likes antlers. So we give them deer antlers um, that are made of bone so they can chew on those. So he has a couple different favorite foods. All right, guys, we'll do one more question. And then if there's any that we didn't get to, we'll try to answer them on Facebook later. Let's see. Um, let's try and find a really good. <laughs> Campbell would like to know if he has ever tried to escape. <laughs> um, so Pokey, as I mentioned, loves to chew, um, sometimes on things he should not chew on. So we um, have had a, a lot of excitement trying to keep up with him. So he does like to climb on the top of his enclosure. Um, he climbs up the tree in the middle. So there have been a few times where it seems like Pokey's trying to explore a little more than we would like him to. So thankfully he has never escaped, um, but he probably has put some effort towards it. So yes, <laughs> that's a great question. All right, guys, I think that's all for today. Thank you for tuning in. And again, we'll be running this series Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. And if you would like to learn more about how you can help us, please check out our website, elmwoodparkzoo.org. And have a great day. <laughs>